Good morning, y'all. Grant Woldridge here at uh, Woldridge Boats Factory in Seattle, Washington, and another walkthrough video of one of our boats to give you a good view of what's inside, room and feel, different options, standard and added, and uh, so it makes for uh, a good tool to see what we got going on here. This happens to be one of our 26-foot Super Sport Offshore Pilot House models. Um, this boat has a, a longer extended cabin so that they can have a stand-up head inside. This boat has self-bailing floors inside, has standard the full width offshore bracket, but in addition, they did a ex bottom pod extension. You don't need that. You can do, it, there's pros and cons to it, to a normal bracket, to a full width bottom extension. You can do any version. The neat thing about that gives us a little more buoyancy, a little more stability. We can stay on step at a little slower speed, but we lose a couple miles an hour top speed. So most people, that doesn't matter. The top speed is more the efficiency, stability, those type of things. So anyhow, that's the bottom pod, and there's different versions. No right or wrong, we can do any of them. This guy, he's got trim tabs in the back. He's got a transducer bracket over there with a couple transducers. There's an anode there. Um, he's got a Honda 250 four-stroke and a Honda 99 four-stroke kicker, which is controlled by a rear station, which we'll take a better look at here in a second. Boat comes standard with five welded cleats all the way around. Welded downriggers are standard. He's got a couple additional brackets here. This boat's going to be used in, in the central U.S. He's not going to see much salt. He's doing big lakes, reservoirs, and these are for planing mass, planer boards. So cool, neat thing. He's got some Scotty. 2106 downriggers, little canvas awning. He's got rod holders off to the side. You can do them up on the roof or the side. Obviously with the awning, it makes sense to have them on the side here because it's a little tough to reach them if you did it on the back of the roof. You can see a VHF antenna on top, big bow railings. Um, we'll go take a closer look at all this stuff, but for now, let's go look at the front of the boat. All right, here we are at the front of the boat. He has one of our really neat options. He has a bow pulpit with a ladder beneath, and he also has the large gullwing door in the cuddy. So for people that are pulling up to the shore, doing shore exploration, hunting on shore, getting in and out of the bow of the boat, if you pull up to the beach, this is a really nice feature. Some guys are just ocean fishermen, and they never pull up to the, the beach. You never need that. Um, the gullwing door might come in handy for a guy who needs quick access to his anchor. Um, maybe he doesn't have a switch inside the boat. That makes that handy. But if we're pulling up to the beaches, this bow pulpit with the folding ladder and the gullwing are really sweet. So he's got the big bow rails that come down right here to the front. So climbing up is really nice. I'll show you how the ladder works here. So it folds down. And if obviously we're up on a trailer sitting in a parking lot, if we're pulled up to the beach, the beach is literally going to be about the same level I'm standing on in the back of the truck. So getting up is really easy, and then our go-wing door, and we've got steps down on the inside. It makes it real nice, inside and out. All right, here we are up on the roof. Um, not a super exciting part of a boat, but there is an important thing to look at and see what we do different than others. Um, well, actually, one option this guy does have, he has a little LED floodlight right here at the front. So whether it's messing with the anchor or we're pulled up to the beach um, and we need to light up the bow pulpit for the ladder and all, that makes it handy. Um, so our roof, this guy, he does not have a radar arch or a radar box. Again, this boat is used in, in the central United States in freshwater lakes, so it's not as big a deal there as offshore when the fog rolls in. So he doesn't have a radar, totally fine. He has a nice GPS antenna, a VHF antenna over to my left. But the big thing on the roof that I wanted to show you, this is a standard roof. This is what it looks like normally. It has railings all the way down each side, welded railings. We have diamond plate in the center. The roof has, a, has an arch to it from port to starboard. And if you look down from front to back, it has an arch this way as well. So it's built like a bridge. It's nice and tough. 
these pieces, they overlap each other where these bends are over top of the flat stock from the diamond plate. So it creates cable runs and it builds like a strength into it. So we have a light roof that's very strong. So throwing some crab pots or different things up here, it's not a concern like just a flat skin that's got little channels welded underneath. This boat, because it's built with the arch into it, we have some overlapping uh, channels. It's a tough roof, nice and strong, and it looks good too. So there's a little look at the roof. All right, well, about time we climb up and take a look inside of the boat. So same ladder that you've seen under the bow pulpit on the front of the boat, we can also put underneath the offshore bracket on either side here at the stern. So whether someone's swimming or falling in the water or the boat's just on the trailer and we're climbing in and out doing work, this ladder's really handy for getting in and out. See our full width offshore bracket here again. We have a kicker bracket on either side. That's built into its standard. This guy has the kicker on the port side. Nice big fishing area. Again, 26 foot. He has the extended cabin. The cabin's extended two feet for a stand-up head option in this boat. Does downriggers. All the boats come standard with a nice big transom sink. It's 50 gallons. There's a two-piece cutting board lid. So you can use one side while you're putting fish or bait into the other side. It's got drains and overflow holes. He has a wash down pump and his spigot and hose he wanted in the sink. So if you took the hose off, got some crab, you're going to keep it fresh. You can run that, keep some crab fresh down inside. This boat's got the rear station for the kicker engine. Um, depending on main engine or main engines, if you have fly-by-wire controls, you can do full-blown controls for the main engine back here. That's not as common. This boat is much set up more common where we have full controls for the kicker engine. It's got a tie bar that would connect it to the main engine, so steering is all connected. It's all hydraulic. Then you've got start and stop and full controls right here for the kicker. Um, All right, well here we are in the back. Again, you can see how much room is in this boat. There's tons of room for fishing. Like I was saying, a uh, real good use of space in the fishing deck and where we can seat people inside and where we can sleep them. So, nice big deck, big boxes under the floor. They run up underneath where we can't even see. We've got locking storage, actually it's just locking the bilge up. For our gas water separators, you can see our blue sea switch panels, fuses, our ACR, there's different hubs. Um, we've got batteries down under that side with some uh, fuel filters, our wash down pump and other storage. Full length rod lockers on each side. We've got a guttered lip there with a gasket. So when we shut this guy, it snugs it down. So whether it's raining or we're washing down, we're not getting water into our rod lockers. You can see our speakers this is our switch for the wash down pump. He's got a spigot and a 25 foot hose inside this big 50 gallon transom sink here in the back. Again, the two piece cutting board lid. Nice big sink. This whole area is all sink. It's got his downriggers each side. Scotty 2106Bs, the braid line. You can probably just barely see the steering wheel there for the rear helm. So, nice big area. This is what the back end looks like. Oh, yeah, another thing that's common on all Woldridge boats is you got this toe kick. I can get my feet right up underneath the side of the boat. They're right underneath the weight of my body. I don't feel like I've got this kind of slant going on where I'm uncomfortable if I had a wave or I'm dealing with a fender or something, netting a fish. So it feels real comfortable to lean against, right against the side here. Um, so nice comfortable stance when fishing. Then there's an ACR and a switch. An ACR is a Blue Sea Systems product, an automatic charging relay, which then connects to two big house batteries. So he's got a, a pretty neat little system here. There's shore power on this boat. He's got a nice battery charger, pro charging systems, PS3 charger. Very nice US made charger. So I guess let's take a look inside the boat. All right, well, before we run in, just another quick view of the rear station. This is what our rear station looks like with the added storage box down below. So he's got locking storage down here. Inside there's a shelf, there's a Charles isolation transformer down the bottom which is part of the shore power system. Again, steering wheel connected to the full hydraulics. Uh, instruments or gauges, or I'm sorry, shift and throttle for the kicker engine. Um, he has a ram mount here which he's going to put an iPad in 
an iPad with a waterproof case, whether it's an OtterBox or LifeProof, because the Garmin system that he has, he's going to wirelessly be able to sync to the iPad and uh, use a couple of the free Garmin apps where he can look at everything on his iPad from the depth to the GPS to his charts, everything that this Garmin system has, he can see from the back. And then, of course, you're going to take your iPad home and use it for everything else, so why not? Um, so it's a way with uh, not having to put a full-blown rear rear display back here and, and use an iPad. So you can set up courses at night, wirelessly sync it to the Garmin. Pretty cool little system. So he also has a, a fish hawk. This is something they use uh, in the middle of the U.S. at a lot of these deep lakes and, and he's going to be using that with his downriggers and trolling mass and whatnot. It's just it's a unique uh, tra transducer system. So a uh, little LED floodlight, nice full glass door, high quality latches, hinges, it's all diamond sea glaze, top of the line. We'll go take a look. All right, well, here we are inside the cabin. Um, nice and spacious. You can see lots of room, very tall. I'm almost 6'3". There's still another few inches above me. Um, this boat has a long countertop in it. It's one of the common options. We actually have it built into a package house or pilot house package. Um, along with the dinette and the table and many other things. So this boat he has a Wallace diesel stove and it is also a heater when the lid is folded down. This can run off a of diesel or kerosene. He's got a sink here, freshwater sink. There's freshwater holding tank down below. The diesel tank for this is down below. It's an all aluminum welded tank. Um, it fills from the outside and vents from the outside. You don't have to bring fuels inside the boat which is nice. There's also a Wabasto AT2000 diesel forced air furnace, which we have ducting up to the windows for defrost. Both of those run off of that tank. Um, there's 10 gallons of fresh water. So he's got nice, you do all nice wood doors, tons of storage down below, a hub for uh, different fuses and whatnot are right underneath the countertop, all labeled clearly, nice to see. They're all very different from each boat to another depending on what you have built in your boat because again, there's a custom boat. Um, we have a baseline model, but then you can do lots of different things. Each boat can be very different from one another. So he's got a nice uh, little spice rack, uh, paper towel holder cabinet here. Of course, all your scenes the door there, but there's a couple shelves, the spice rack inside, full length trays up above. Nice dinette over here, uh, three foot wide in this boat. Um, so about three foot by three foot table. The front has a flip flop backrest. So whether we're facing the table, me and my friend can sit here and have a tuna fish sandwich. Or of course, if we're running and we want to look forward, we can flip it back and face forward. Uh, one of the really neat things about this dinette is it does turn into a, a very long bed, about a seven foot long bed. This uh, backrest comes and drops down there. The table drops on a gas shock. There's a cushion that goes over top of it, and you have a very big bed here. It's a prime spot, actually. So he has the optional suspension seat. This is a Mar Bentley's Mariner, which is a nice seat. It's adjustable, different heights. You can slide forward, slide back. There's shock adjustments, pocket in the back. So let's uh, come in. We'll take a closer look at a few other things. Well, here's the bed. You can see it's nice and big when folded down. Um, well, right above me, you can see we got LED dome lights, grab handles. Um, again, I'm, I'm almost 6'3", depends on the day. And uh, there's my feet butted up against the, the head and I still got that much more to go. That's a nice spot. So nice and comfortable, big layout. Um, so this dinette package is pretty darn cool. We got a table, even if you didn't have the countertop on the other side, you have a table here to make sandwiches if you want a place to put things, place to sit, read a book. And there's tons of storage because underneath the back box and front box, both open up to give you a whole bunch more storage, which again is a, is a must on the boat. There's storage down beneath the pedestal below and storage underneath the floor. So what I'll do now, I won't fully set it back up, but I'll just, I'll pull this cushion off and I'll raise the table so you can see how easy the gas shock raises up this table. It's not something you have to, to fight up like a lot of the old campers. So if I just move that out of the way, boom, just loosen that up the table comes. We put the cushions back where they go. So it's super easy. All right, well, here I am at the helm. 
get a little better view of that. Hydraulic steering, nice steering wheel. Got our fuel gauge. Um, he has a nice stereo system here, which has a plug to plug in USB or just an auxiliary jack if we're plugging in an iPod or any other MP3 player. He's got a Honda digital gauge. This is an upgrade from a standard gauge. Shows fuel flow, some other neat features that the engine's doing, voltage it's putting back into the engines. He actually has a full NEMA 2000 backbone and a cord growing from the Honda engine into the backbone so he can see all that data on his Garmin screen as well. This is a 1040 XS. This is a nice screen. It's a somewhat of an economy unit by Garmin. It offers all the cool stuff and charts, GPS, fish finding capabilities, but it's a 10 inch screen with buttons. So there's a few things that save you quite a bit of dough. So it's a really neat unit. It's radar compatible and everything else. Um, all of our switch panels, they're all blue sea systems, top of the line, the best you can get. So, which is important as part of the backbone of the boat is the electrical system. So your batteries, your switches, everything else, it's important that you have good quality. He's got lots of stuff in this boat. So we have got two panels here. Um, he's got Lenco trim tabs, there's LED indicators. He's got switches are over here right in front of the binnacle. So it's a nice comfortable spot when running. And again, this stuff can be placed wherever someone wants it. So they tell their opinion of where they like things and, and that's where it'll go. Um, he's got a 12 volt plug over here for charging. There's a Garmin VHF 200 up top. Again, speakers. He's got a nice fan. It's an oscillating fan, a Ritchie backlit compass. And you can just probably barely see the ducts here for the top of the Wabasto, which also has a duct down below. So when we're sleeping down in the cuddy, we have nice, warm, dry air. So um, lots of room. I'll go ahead and uh, climb down inside and you can see what it looks like down below. Um, before that though, again, just you got a real good view of our visibility in this cabin. Again, big, open diamond sea glaze sliding windows. They have screens, they're locking, bolt-in diamond sea glaze, windows in the front, pantograph wipers, all that standard in the pilot house, okay? So here's our, this is the uh, digital thermostat for the Wabasto. So let's go ahead and climb down in front and uh, show you how big the cuddy is. All right, well, here's the cuddy. You can see up front, if I remove that front cushion and this cushion, we've got steps that get us right up and out of that gull wing hatch that I came in earlier. So real easy access in and out. So this is the normal length of the cuddy. Comes right to here. Again, I'm almost 6'3". I bottom out up here. So there's plenty of room for another full-size adult to lay next to me. We also have an option where we extend these cuddy cushions all the way back to the seats. You can store the extensions down below and that gives you a huge bed up front. Three people and then you got the, the bed up on the dinette. So we got realistic use of space in this boat from seated people while running around, sleeping people, and of course the fishing deck is massive. This boat here, he's got the curtains that run across for privacy if wanted. So yeah, that's the cuddy. Let's go look at the most important part, the throne room. Well, here we are in the commode, the important room of the boat here. All the business gets done. Lots of room. Again, you've seen me stand up. I'm almost 6'3", depending on the day, and I got plenty of room to stand up and do my business, but sitting down, I've got plenty of leg room. It feels good for a head in a boat. It's a pretty good size. There's windows all around, though there's also curtains, ladies, so don't be alarmed. Uh, the windows are so that the captain does not have a blind spot when pulling into a marina, seeing docks, other boats up next to it. So there's a 20 gallon holding tank down underneath the floor along with a Johnson macerator pump. So we can, if we're far enough offshore, we can dump stuff overboard, which goes out the bottom of the boat. Um, if uh, you're up next to a dock, there's a suck out on the gunnel. Um, all of the through hauls are a welded pipe through the bottom that come up above water level, then hoses attached to them. So there's no worry of a hose failure causing your boat to sink. So that's a neat thing that we do in all of them. So again, this is the head, lots of room, nice door in the front, got dome light inside, windows and curtains, opening door in the back, which is important for you stinky people. So, all right.